Hey everyone, welcome to The Roundtable with Vienna White, Season 1, Episode 48. I'm your host, Millie Rouge, from the band Vienna White. This Roundtable is a Yeg Music production. Thank you all for tuning into the show this afternoon. I want to introduce you individually to all of our guests we have today. Our first guest is Amy Chassing from Cape Town, South Africa. Our next guest is Jacko Hooper from Brighton, UK. And our last guest is Michael Daughtry from Rowley, Carolina. Did I say that correctly? Rowley, Carolina? Okay. Rowley, North Carolina. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's the only one I was unconfident about. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so welcome to the show today, everybody. I wanted to start off by very simply asking you first, how was your day today? How's it going so far? I know we've got some different time zones here. So for you guys, it's probably close to evening time. So how's your day been so far? <laughs> Oh, mine's Who's been... going first? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was wondering, the same thing. I was like, should I jump in? <laughs> Just jump in. <laughs> uh, well, mine's been pretty quiet. I mean, it's... Uh, exactly. It's... <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's nearly 7 p.m. here, so um, we're getting to that sort of time, uh, starting mm-hmm. to start to think about food. Um, yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's been pretty quiet. Just been, um, just been working from home, and uh, it's mm-hmm. still kind of... Um, you know, uh, isolation territory or whatever. Yes. So, yeah. Um, yeah, generally trying to stay in where and when I can, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to know what's your population like in Brighton? Um, we're about, I think, we're like around half a million, I think, maybe 400,000, okay. something okay. like that. It's like yeah. quite a small city, but. Right. Okay, very nice. I, I just, I've been to London and kind of the England area before, but and like Leeds, but I wasn't quite sure about Brighton. So that's awesome to hear. Um, how's it for you, Michael, in uh, Carolina? What's new and exciting there? Um, not a whole lot. I mean, <laughs> as, as you can imagine, um, just, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on. I mean, as, as, yeah. as you know, Raleigh downtown, there've been some, there've been some um, incidents, you know, and mm-hmm. protests, peaceful and, and otherwise. Um, mm-hmm. But as far as me and my little, corner of the universe it's been fairly quiet i've had a few I, i'm an online music teacher that's a, oh, awesome. uh, one of the supplemental you know ways that i make a living and mm-hmm. i really enjoy it but i've had a few lessons today and i'll have a few more after the show as well so nice. i'm kind of in the middle of my day and, and yeah so, so good that's <laughs> awesome have you always been teaching online or do you typically teach in person i i crash coursed along along with a lot of instructors yeah okay sort of like got into yeah. it and, but it's been fairly smooth you know uh relatively so yeah awesome. but yeah. You know, I, I really do in person and um hopefully in a few months we'll mm-hmm. be back to that we'll see you know mm-hmm. but for now yeah online instruction yeah. is where it's at so yeah it's a it's a new way of learning for sure and i think we take we kind of like take it take for advantage how easy it is to uh learn in person and how much easier it is to teach in person and compared to being you know, online, there's the lagging and you're kind of trying to see their hands and you can't really see. I've, I've dealt with some online lessons before, so I'm quite familiar with that as well. <laughs> for the really young folks, it's like, it's, yeah. it's a really unique challenge. It's mm-hmm. like... <laughs> trying to keep their attention span on you, I can that's imagine. Tough. Yeah, that's <laughs> tough. Fine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how about yourself, Amy? For you, I know it's a little bit later in the evening as well. How's your day been so far? It's been really, really cool. Um, we're actually staying on a farm in the middle of South Africa during the the really hectic lockdown. So our mm-hmm. lockdown in South Africa has been really tough. People aren't allowed to smoke. They've banned cigarettes. Mm-hmm. So people are protesting about, we want to have our cigarettes. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so, and that's been like that for two months already. Wow. Um, so I'm secluded in this little, on a little farm in the middle Mm -hmm. of nowhere and I've been doing songwriting and I do a lot of online songwriting sessions with um, musicians in Europe and that's awesome yeah it's that's what I do and I did that today so it was great (laughs) yeah that sounds like a great place to be secluded I mean not for the rest of your life but for a short while for sure to get away and (laughs) focus on your writing absolutely that sounds great (laughs) Um, so I kind of wanted to jump in to talk about yeah, all of your uh, musical careers individually, just so I can kind of get to know each of you 
um, because I've never met any of you. This is my first time meeting you, and this is our first time for our audience meeting you as well. Um, So Amy, can you kind of tell us how you kind of got into music? I know you've got quite a big career because I've noticed you were on The Voice and you were a semi-finalist. So can you kind of tell us more about your experience with music that you've had so far? I was one of those like really nerdy people at school and I went one day I went to we did a bride um, which all you guys barbecue. And since my whole life changed and I studied music, I worked on cruise ships for five years as a director. Oh, cool. I lived in London for a year and a half. And Africa, I got invited to take part in The Voice, and I did mm-hmm. it. I came seven. Was really, really focusing on my songwriting. Of Africa, national songwriting camps. And it was awesome. So, uh, work with like top producers and songwriters and what's songwriting sides of things because I mean we all want to be a rock star one day but like <laughs> you know it, uh, the hustle and the struggle is real yeah absolutely no that's that's really cool to hear you've had like an incredible journey so far um Jacko I wanted to know a little bit more about your musical journey and how you kind of got to where you are today in the UK um, well, I mean, I've been um, performing um, since I was about 11 or 12. I'm from Brighton and I, I, I'm lucky that it's a really musical city. Um, it's obviously it's still really near London as well. So you can, still, you can still kind of like tap into the London scene whilst um, escaping to the, the ocean, um, quite quickly, which, I, which I, I need, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I've just been um, writing and recording and <clears throat> releasing music for, for quite a long time now. And um, I sort of, um, I've done tours in the UK and in Europe and um, just sort of my sort of journey has been mainly focused around the live element, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of how I sort of, that was always my passion. And then I, I just sort of, you know, I just kept doing it. Um, and then sort of, I've been lucky to have some pretty cool opportunities uh, along the way and played with some really cool artists and stuff. Um, and, uh, now I also run my own promotions company. So uh, I put on a lot of shows and, um, I release records through that as a record label. And so I've kind of, um, the longer I've been doing it, the more I've kind of broadened my, uh, musical spectrum as it were, um, and not just, um, not just writing and releasing music, but um, in order to, for it to be my full-time um, job or my, my, my full-time lifestyle, yeah. um, I now do, yeah, other things as well, which are kind of more in the sort of music industry side of things. Mm-hmm. That's kind that's of where amazing. I'm at now. That's amazing. That's amazing that you're able to continue with music so heavily and so fully into your life because I know it's, for myself, I'm kind of the same way. I'm about like... 80% of my life is doing music and music related things. And there's that small 20% that pays my bills at the end of the day. Yeah, of course, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's so awesome to, spot to get, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I, I'm so grateful for it because it's so hard to get for most people that 80% of music, but I kind of just built it up from the ground and was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> mm, um, so Michael, I kind of wanted to hear more about your musical journey and how you got to where you are in Carolina today. Okay. Well, um, I have, always been interested in music and um, I started out um, college at UNC Chapel Hill. I was a music major but I always had a little bit of a um, pull towards kind of I guess you could say bigger and better things. I don't know uh, you know just the the uh, allure of um, up in Boston. I stayed in Boston for about 10 years and lived there um, I went to Berkeley College of Music and graduated from there um, a, a little over 20 years ago mm-hmm. and stayed up there for a few years afterwards. I performed for about two years um, with the Blue Man Group and um, followed up. We were always, we call it the opener, but we were actually the closer. So like when they do the, the shows, we were the band that kind of kept around afterwards. Mm-hmm. afterwards. Mm-hmm. So we did that for about 
two years. Then I moved back here um, to North Carolina and I've sort of been playing regionally. Um, I do, we've gotten kind of into um, a lot of marathons and, and um, runs like uh, uh, because our music is sort of high energy and, and, and kind of fun, uh, energetic. So we've gotten into that the past few years, which 10 years ago I would have said that <laughs> that's a thing. Uh, but anyway, so we do that some. And of course, I, as I say, I teach music, um, acoustic guitar and piano. And I teach a small, uh, I have a small band program at a small school here. Um, in there. So. That's so much fun. That sounds like, yeah, like a lot of music in your life. And you've been present with music your whole life. That's amazing. <laughs> Alrighty, so I want to jump. Thank you all for sharing, by the way. It's awesome to kind of learn more about each of you individually. Um, now I want to jump into our topic of the day, which I think is great because all of you seem to have your toes in all of this, all of this subject. So we're chatting about today how to take your music to the next step. Now I think when we start as artists, we typically were a lot of it is hobby when we first start, of course. We're kind of just trying to figure out the ropes to see if this is something we're actually good at, other than our mom just telling us we're good. We're trying to see if other people agree. Um, so I want to know when you first started out as a musician um, and you felt like you were starting to finally get into that kind of realm of being a serious musician, um, what were some of the challenges you faced at the beginning that maybe you don't necessarily face now? Um, so whoever wants to start it off, just jump into it and then we'll kind of, whoever wants to add, we can add in if that's okay. <laughs> okay, I'll go. <laughs> um, okay, so for me, one of the, the biggest challenges that I had was my voice so if you guys listen to me speak now i've got quite a high-pitched voice and you can picture me 10 years ago so i'm 27 now so picture me at 17 phoning a venue being like hello can you please book me for a show like i'm Emmy. and his people would be like you're 10 there's no way we're gonna book you at our venue to play and i was like i'm not i'm 18 i'm 19 i'm 20 even now when well, not really now because people know more who i am now so I don't have to look for gigs anymore, which is great. But mm -hmm. there was at the beginning when you headhunt those gigs and like, you know, people don't respond to emails. So you phone them. Yeah. And then, then eventually I started just going to the venue with my guitar and I would walk in, I'd say, hello, my name's Amy Chassing and you have to listen to me sing now. And I promise you, you'll want to book me. Mm. <laughs> so that's what I used to do. And then eventually they started saying yes. And it wasn't so many no's. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. That's such an, a unique challenge. I don't think most people deal with. So that would be so interesting to have to, to kind of get through that hump for sure. I, I have to be, I have to be fair. Cause when I did look at your Instagram, Amy, I was like, I, I thought you were in your mid twenties to be honest, but then I saw one of your posts where it said you were 26 and I was like, no way we are the same age. I did not think she was anywhere close to my age, but I didn't think you were 10. I thought you were at least in your twenties, so like 2022. 20, <laughs> but I think that's an amazing thing. You'll last so long in the music industry because you'll never look old. So you're good. <laughs> uh, now, Jacko, I want to. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, Jacko, um, I kind of wanted to know if you had any, I know you said you've done a lot of live music and that's kind of your, your favorite thing to do with live music. Um, so I want to know what kind of challenges maybe you faced at the beginning that maybe you don't face now. Um, it's a good question. I think because I think earlier on, I think some of the first sort of um, like performing in, in like larger rooms for the first time was definitely um, a unique challenge because I'm, I don't perform with a band. It's just me, um, usually just guitar and vocals. So to try, I'd never thought I'd be playing sort of like larger rooms. Um, so, to, and my music's quite personal and fairly um, melancholic. So mm -hmm. to, to, to figure out how to sort of transform that into something that works live in a larger setting was quite challenging. Right. Um, and it's not so much... That's to be honest, that's probably more of an ongoing thing as well, because, you know, like most people in music, you know, careers can sort of ebb and flow a bit and sort of things can, you know, I'm not, I'm not playing, you know, arenas every weekend. So it, but it's more like when those opportunities do come up, you've been playing maybe clubs for two or 300 people and then um, something else yeah, might come up and you've got 5,000 people there and you're like, okay, 
I've got to try and sort of stick to who I am and what I do. But the reality is I'm going to have to adjust, yeah. you know, to, to fit this. So I think mm-hmm. that's something that like, yeah, something that at the start in particular, when that first started happening, I was like, okay, I've, I've never had to think about this before. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting experience because I myself dealt with that being at the beginning of my solo career. I did a lot of uh, like indie singer songwriter. So it can be very boring sometimes. And it's not in a bad way. It's just when you listen to an hour of slow music, you're just kind of like, okay, give me something else. Like give me something exciting or like (laughs) pump me up, you know? So I think now the project I'm in, it's a a pop duo with my uh, bandmate, Marissa. And we like to play music, like our whole goal is to play music that we would dance to and we would kind of have fun to. So I think it's, it does definitely depend on the the gig you're playing or whatever you're hired for. Because sometimes it can be, you know, a really fun high energy. Sometimes it's more like you're playing to a retirement home and you probably don't want to play like, bangers because they might not appreciate yeah. that <laughs> yeah luckily i don't i don't get booked for too many sort of uh for, for too many club nights or anything so right. um, <laughs> usually I, it's usually okay I'm, usually i'm a bit safer yeah, the, yeah. The, the audience will have more of an idea of what i'm going to be bringing to the table but right um, right but it does still happen don't get me wrong i've yep. still got i've still got many horror shows um, <laughs> so. i think we've all had that experience before <laughs> for sure <laughs> Um, now, Michael, I want to hear kind of what your struggles were at the beginning. I know you've got kind of a long career that you've had so far, but what were some of the beginning challenges you had to face? Um, I would say sort of just the whole getting started thing and sort of uh, developing your own identity. I mean, you know, we all have our own identity, obviously, mm-hmm. but part of that whole growing into yourself, it's 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 hard to just kind of put into words, but it's like, you know, when you're first getting started, um, I sort of wish that we had more like open mic opportunities. That was part of what, Mm. you know, like I'm from North Carolina and then um, moving to Boston, that was a lot of, uh, that was a good experience because I sort of got started with open mics and things like that. So that was a good way to start. But I guess the struggles of um, what I don't have now is like, you know, my, I'm a little more known. Um, I'm not like a big star or anything, but you know, I can sort of get gigs and and Mm -hmm. sort of things. And so I guess that that's what was the main struggle is just sort of like getting yourself out there. And I think like a lot of um, like a lot of artists and musicians, like the whole self marketing thing is just like, it's really strange. It's really, it's like, it's, you know, <laughs> it's toe curling, like, what is it? Yeah. What am I doing? It can be really strange and, and uncomfortable, but, but I think some getting over that, mm-hmm. um, but then, I mean, because part of it with me was, okay, I realized, well, I'm going to do this. This is what I, you know, this right. is what I, I passion and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to find a way to plow through it. So I plowed through it. And so, but I would think that would be sort of one of the main struggles as, as a musician is just sort of getting over that whole, like putting yourself out there and, and being like, this is, this is me. And I don't fit into this genre. You know, right. I still don't do a lot of genres. I, and, and that ends up becoming part of the joyful part of it. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it makes it unique. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's perfect. I love that. I, I like that you mentioned um, when you said the, the self-marketing for musicians, because I think that's really hard. And I know a lot of musicians, they don't have that business background. A lot of them really struggle with that because um, it's hard. It's like we're not trained to think that way. We're not trained to think of numbers and money. We're trained to think, oh, this sounds beautiful and this sounds not beautiful. Like I think it's really hard to to get ourselves in that mindset. But I think if you train yourself enough or like, kind of like you said, Michael, like you just get enough years in the, like of experience, eventually it just kind of, you figure it out. Um, we lost our friend Amy, but hopefully she will come back in. She was probably just having some connection issues, but we'll, we'll see when she gets back in, but we'll keep going on. Um, so I kind of am curious to know when you feel as a musician that it started to click for you, where you're starting to kind of get into that, okay, this is, this is a serious thing. I do this not just for fun anymore. This is kind of like, this has become my career. Um, so can you explain that moment where you think that it clicked for you? If you had this moment, I know maybe not everyone maybe has this moment or one that can remember, but if you have a specific memory of when you think it started to really kind of solidify for you. 
Um, well, I think for, for me personally, I mean, I don't know if, um, if this is, um, I don't know if I'm in the, <clears throat> the minority here or not, but for me, it was really early. Um, like pretty much as soon, I remember um, buying, like when I went out with my family, we'd do like a food shop and I was allowed to buy a CD every time we, that was like part of the deal, you know? So um, I bought this CD and this CD was the album and it was a compilation and it just said on the front, it was like best of like up and coming British rock bands and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't even really know what that was, but it had a cool artwork cover. So I was like, that'll, that'll do. It's like buying a book. <laughs> just, I'll give it a go. Yeah. And um, I listened to that and I remember like hearing, hearing bands and music that I'd literally never heard before, like genre wise mm-hmm. and like just complete energy and um, like, which isn't the sort of music that I do now, but it was the thing that sparked the um, passion mm-hmm. for it. And I remember just being like that, that's what I'm going to do. And I was about 11 and that was like decision made. Um, I was never, I, I always knew I was never going to go to college. I was never going to go to university. I was like, I'm going to learn my instrument. And then as soon as like school's done, I'm going to start doing that. That's right. that sort of decision made. But, um, and then I just didn't stop. So. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I, I had that similar moment too, I think. Like I knew in my brain that I was never going to do anything music so i really i really relate to that totally uh yeah, now there was my no plan b it was just yeah, like I just gotta, that's your I only guess, plan I just, gotta, I just gotta make it work because yeah that's what i meant to do so yeah absolutely um now michael what was kind of your experience where you think you kind of clicked and you were like this is what i'm meant to do and this is going to be my career or my job type of thing i think it was i was around maybe 15 or 16 and <laughs> I was in a band that, um, gosh, I think our, I think our name, this is terrible. I think our name was Noble Savage. Um, <laughs> if that I gives you an of the sound, yeah. It's very fitting. <laughs> so we were kind of like a little on the metal side, a little on the rock side, mm. whatever. But long and short of it, we played this show um, for like a community college and uh, maybe 40 or 50 people in the audience. And, you know, we, we played like maybe three or four songs and, and we weren't that great, you know, and, and the drummer left his sticks. So we had to grab a broom from the kitchen and like break it apart. So he had to no. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But all of that, you know, at the end of the night, if my brother was in the band with me at the time too, and we just looked at each other and we were just like, this is it, you know, this yeah. is it. This is it. So that that was pretty much the night that clicked with me. And like I say, fifteen or sixteen years old, I was really yeah. a kid. But, yeah. But I knew it. I knew it then. So that's an amazing memory. I love that. I think that would stick in my brain forever too. <laughs> <laughs> now, Amy, I know you missed my question, so I'm gonna restate the question so you know what we're talking about. Um, so when did you feel that when you like when did you feel as a music- musician that it really started to click for you? Was what was that moment where you knew that this was something you were gonna do for the rest of your life, music wise? Um wow. <laughs> so- it's hard to hard to think, right? <laughs> I think now I have a time. Okay. Um, the moment <laughs> it, it clicked for me was probably when I was in high school mm. and I was sitting in my accounting class and we got our test scores back and my teacher said, Amy, you did so bad. You only got 45%. And I was, I was like 17 and I was just like, well, do you know what? I don't care if I got 45% because I'm not going to be an accountant. I'm going to be a musician. And I got up. <laughs> And I walked out the class. Oh my god! I went to the principal's office, and I said, "Please, can I change my subjects? I want to do drama instead." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he said, "Okay," and I went and I joined the drama class instead, wow. and never looked back. And then my mom said, "Well, now you better stick to it because you don't have accounting anymore. You can't right. have a career like that anymore." <laughs> so that, oh my gosh, that's incredible. You're, you're so confident. I love that. At 17, you're so confident. That's amazing. <laughs> I don't need to be an accountant. <laughs> no, you do not. I don't think anyone needs to. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I, I highly doubt, I seriously wonder if an accountant, like when you're growing up and you're like, you know what? I'm going to be an accountant. Like, I don't think that's ever said by anyone. I think people that are accountants just kind of get like, 
pushed into it somehow, some way. <laughs> um, so my next question for you guys is, um, what has made you want, what's, what's kind of the reasoning behind why you want to pursue music more as a career than maybe you did at the beginning of your career where you thought, okay, I'm just doing this for fun. I'm just kind of testing it out. What was the reason you wanted to take it further? What was the motive behind it, if you will? Does anyone want to start? <laughs> it's a tough question as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think the point of knowing, or are you saying sort of like uh, at the point where you realize that you are sort of in this as it were? Yeah, like what kind of draw, like drawed you into wanting to do it more like full time rather than just like as a hobby? I, th I think for me, it was the, just the initial buzz from uh, playing live. I think I was a very like anxious kid. Um, and then I kind of had this sort of alter ego of me being you know, on stage performing, um, which was like really attractive. Um, and I quite liked being like the center of attention in that way because yeah, generally speaking, that wasn't really um, what I was about. Mm -hmm. I think it was kind of addictive. It was like, this is fun. I can kind of be someone else. I can kind of, uh, um, yeah just feel more confident it's strange it's a strange sort of way to get there yeah but um because you're so so hugely exposed um but for some reason that made me feel more confident um and yeah i think once i got the bug for it i think that was like that was when i was like okay everyone's telling me oh you know it's really hard it's really hard to be you know to do music and i i was sort of with the mindset of i know that but as I said in the in the last question, it was kind of like there, there's not really a plan B here because this that's what I want. So mm -hmm. you know, if I do this and it doesn't quite go to some dizzying height, yeah. I'm kind of okay with that as long as I'm doing it. Um, that was that was that was it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that, um, Michael. What was kind of your experience that made you really want? to pursue like I know you went to college so that probably you know also really helps to make you <laughs> want to decide to pursue it further but what was that kind of like for you well it's sort of like what Amy was saying it's sort, it's sort of like you kind of life happens right things happen in your life and some some things just sort of like put you at a crossroads or at a meeting place where it's like well you know I either need to go this direction or that direction for me, you know, I'd been in a band for uh, several bands over the years. And then I got to a point like, I, uh, like when I turned around 30, where it's like, okay, now do I, you know, do I go in this direction or that direction? So I sort of went, uh, I'd been playing long enough to where I was like, well, I'll just go out sort of on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started out as a singer songwriter again. And it was really strange because I felt like I was 18 all over again. You know, but um, sort of went that route for a few years. And now um, I have sort of a, back, a band that sort of backs me uh, called The Drift. So, um, and there are a couple of guys that play bass and, and drums and they're phenomenal players. And so I kind of came back to it through that way. But I would say that it's sort of those points where you're just like, okay, what am I going to do now? Because as, as everyone in this group is saying, you know, I don't, this is what I really want to do. So I'm just going to do whatever needs to be done to get there. And, you know, mm -hmm. so that, that's kind of those, those little parts where it's like, okay, a band breaks up. Well, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to keep doing it in some way, shape or form. So, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then going, going with those motions and saying, okay, well now how do I get there from this point, you know, and constantly sort of setting goals and and sometimes it changes like what you're you know with the pandemic and everything else and, and unrest that changes i'm doing a show now a weekly like variety show that we do on facebook and instagram live and it's totally different than anything it's a little bit more back to my theater roots and mm -hmm. i did not think i five years ago i would have just been like okay well we're playing concerts and festivals that's what we're doing but that's not what we're doing that's not what most of us can do right now so 
you know, yeah. you just find ways to kind of uh, adjust. Make it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Amy, what do you think? Um, I'm curious to kind of know what you have to add to that. So um, just to double check, the question was um, why we choose music. Yeah, like what made you want to pursue it further? Okay, um, I really, my first love is to tell stories and write songs. And that, that was the first thing that I loved about music. And I, I wanted to like always kind of make the world a better place. And I thought I could do that music. So like, um, I didn't have the easiest of childhoods, like I'm sure many people, I'm so many people, but like, so I use music to get away from it. But another thing why I chose music is like, there's one thing that I honestly can't stand and I hate being told what to do. Mm. So I was like, I can't work for anybody else. I'm only going to be able to work for myself because <laughs> I can't, I just, I don't know what it is. It's like, I know it's bad, but if somebody tells me what to do, I will do the opposite. And in music, I feel like, people who do music are naturally rebellious like you want to create and create new paths and like and I think that's one of the main things that actually drew me to music is that I wanted to do something different I didn't want to do what everybody else is doing along with the accountants and the this and the that I'm like you do you I'm just going to write this song about that guy that was rude to me <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> that's awesome I love that that's great I definitely I know that, agree with that. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. I, I think I'm like really, apart from the bit about writing a song about the guy being rude to you, the rest of it was <laughs> exactly the same for me. That rebellion was definitely mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious to know, what are some goals you think are good to set yourself as musicians to keep growing and evolving? What are some kind of constant goals you currently have? Um, Jacko, do you maybe have some goals that you're kind of currently working on that are helping you kind of to evolve as an artist? Yeah, for sure. I think mine kind of, um, I always sort of start the year with um, a set of sort of goals for, for the 12 months. Um, and even before the, the whole pandemic situation, my goal this year was to um, release music more consistently, um, to release a new song online every two months. Mm. And um, because I really wanted to um, be uh, writing more consistently and I've never really been able to release music. Um, it would always be like once a year, there'd be like, you know, an EP or there'd be like a big release and you'd make a, yeah. a big deal of it and you'd work really hard towards it. Um, but, you know, then you'd have like weeks or months leading up to that where the online activity is kind of dwindling because you're working on that. and Yeah. Um, and then you release it and you kind of give so much, um, all at once, all at once. Yeah. And then you're kind of going, oh, maybe, you know, especially now with how people kind of, um, digest music, I think, um, I wanted to give it a go and I wanted to kind of set that challenge. Um, so I'm releasing a song every two months mm -hmm. and I'm just writing kind of like, I'm recording the sort of like two songs ahead of myself as it were. Right. So I've got like the next the next single comes out on the sixteenth, um, uh, but I've got the other two singles already done, sort of ready. Because mm -hmm. um, I suck at that. I always just want to record something and release it. Um, I want people to hear it. I want I want to share my art. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna record two songs that I know are finished. And then only then will I start thinking about releasing one of them and I'll be already working on the next one. Right. Prepared. Kind of being a bit more strategic with it and kind of reining myself in a little bit, mm -hmm. um, which in some ways has been really one of the reasons why I've done some of the things that I have done is that kind of um, lack of patience in a way, because I, it just makes me want to work all the time and um, right. keep, keep on top of it. But equally, um, having a, a level of strategy there I think is something that I'm increasingly learning and trying to improve that doing so mm. that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at at the moment and, and and because we're in this situation with the pandemic it's like you know I, I can't remember the last time I had three months off of working you know a job and I, I'm I'm at home most days yeah. I want to use that time um, 
for this because it probably won't ever happen again. So um, exactly, yeah. That's it. Kind of weirdly, in, in on the musical side of things, that kind of fell into place in a in a weird way, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a brilliant goal because I I completely agree with you that sometimes we make these albums and we spend two years making them, and then we put them out. There's this big big fuss for a little bit, and then it just kind of dwindles down for sure. So, hundred yeah. percent agree. Uh, now, mm-hmm. Michael, what are some goals you've set for yourself with your music? Well, I'm sort of, uh, you know, it's. There's some of the things we, we, with the pandemic or with like having more time on our hands Mm -hmm. um, have, have, you know, they've sort of adjusted the goals, but I've sort of set a goal uh, of, of things to do when, when it's, when we're able to like uh, uh, physically be in the same room (laughs) with, with more. So um, my goal there is to make, I made what I feel like was a really quality recording about five years ago. Um, and we've done a few other EPs since then and they've all been fine, but my sort of next goal is to make either an EP or an LP of like really like, you know, well-produced, like as, as good as, as you know, where, where we really work on the production side of it. I tend to be a real workhorse as far as, um, you know, it's ideas, and I come up with ideas a lot. I'm, I'm like Jack. Jack was saying, very. Uh, you know, as soon as I pr- produce something or create something, it's like I'm sort of always thinking about the next project and, mm-hmm. and that type. Of thing. So I guess with my my goal is to sort of be like because for me, there is no real um, substitute for being in the same room with someone and, you know. And nothing like pandemic to sort of force that, you know, realization of like, wow, you know, this can't be done right now. So yeah. I've sort of my goal of when we're able to, because right now my band and I, we can't, you know, physically get be in the same room. Right. Um, so, you know, that's kind of my goal. Like mm-hmm. make a, get together, work on music. We've, we've been coordinating technology wise, you know, on that but really getting that together yeah absolutely and how about yourself amy what are some goals you've kind of given yourself maybe during this pandemic or even before that so my goals is is basically one task a day um because i find that being a musician especially when we're independent you put so much pressure on yourself to achieve and it's like if you don't achieve your goals, you go into like this deep, dark depression and why did I choose music and my life sucks. And, you know, (laughs) and I find that it's much better to have like bigger goals. So for example, for me this year, I wanted to release three singles post my journey on the voice. I've already released one. I've got another one coming up and another one at the end of the year and then build my songwriting career. So as long as I achieve one small task a day towards Mm -hmm. my end goal, I've achieved something and I don't have to, I need to be proud of myself. So like today I will say I emailed a new songwriter that I'm going to work with. That took me five minutes, but it's something to put yeah. me forward. I'm, I'm, I'm forward versus my life five minutes ago. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And yeah. I find it's better to slowly build. Then, you know, I've also done the thing. It took two years to do an album and then I released it and nothing happened. And it's, it's depressing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So, one task a day. That's yep. my. That's how I'm doing things now. I love that. That's a great goal. I think that's really realistic, and it keeps you to like last longer. I think too, because you're not beating yourself up every time something doesn't go well or something doesn't go as well as you planned, right? So, I love that. That's amazing. Thank you all for sharing. Yeah. Um, that was actually our last question for the day. We are out of time, but we're so lucky to have had you all on today. If you are at home watching this roundtable with Vienna White on YouTube, uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button to be notified about all of our shows that we post. We post uh, two shows daily, Monday to Friday, so there's lots of content to watch. If you want to hear this conversation via a uh, podcast format, just search this up on Spotify, Vienna White. And before we sign off, could I get you all to individually, uh, you'll just say your stage name and where our audience can find you on social media. So Jacko, can you tell us your stage name and where we can find you on social media? Sure thing. Um, so yeah, my name is Jacko Hooper and um, you can find me on all of them by typing in Jacko Hooper pretty much. Um, Instagram is just Jacko underscore Hooper 
and um, yeah, it was great to meet you guys as well. Really inspiring to hear everyone's everyone's journeys and stuff. So thanks for uh, inviting me. No problem. And Michael. I've had a blast today. Thank you, Millie, for having us. Um, Michael Daughtry Music is the social media handle. Uh, MichaelDaughtryMusic.com is the website, and we're on all the you know social media stuffs. Uh, and I'd want to promote our Get the Drift show that we do once a week, and we do that on Facebook Live, Instagram Live. That'll be on YouTube, things like that. So amazing! And Amy, can you sign yourself up? So thank you guys so much for having me. It was awesome to meet you all. My name is Amy Chassing. It's a difficult surname. It's spelled T-J-A-S-I-N-K. And I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. All of my handles are just Amy Chassing. There's like only one of me with a weird surname like that. So <laughs> thank you for having me. For all of you watching, just keep on going at it. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much. It was lovely to meet you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>